What is happening everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Today I have for you guys the very first matchup in the first round of March Madness, the Knife Edition. All the credit for this idea does go to Mikey Reese. So, we have our first round matchup guys. We're going to be talking about the Kaiser Task going up against the Real Steel Sacro. We have 11 categories, one point per uh, subject, and then ties will equal one point. There are 11 categories, and if some way, somehow, there is a tiebreaker, I will break that tie. Your guys' vote and opinion will count whatever you guys think we will take all of it into consideration now with all that being said i will bring out the bracket and i also have some rules that we can cover now if you want a little bit better view of this i uh, posted a community tab picture of the entire playoff but uh, if you want to kind of pause and read you know there are all of the cat uh there are all the first round matchups now we do have 1 through 32 guys and to be honest with you these are basically just numbers so that we could keep track of each knife and where it is and that sort of thing i don't necessarily think the Kaiser Task is the number one knife. I don't think the Sacra is number 32. You know, the Sakoki is a great knife. So, you know, but what I'm getting at is all these are just numbers. I filled everything in. I could uh, using a variety of different companies and knives that I thought could actually compete very well in something like this. Now, there is a cap limit to... The knife that can be in this matchup. Nothing will be over $100. So we have the 11 categories down here. And then we have a little bit of rolls. This is kind of a, just a rough draft. So is that bracket. I actually have some better poster board to put it on. So we will be making things a little bit even more official. But there are the rolls and kind of the rundown 32 knives. The loser of each round will automatically, they will be out. Uh, the winner will move on, all based off all 11 categories. The cash cap limit is going to be 100 bucks. You guys vote. Obviously, I will vote, you know, and if there is a tie break necessary, like I said, I will break that tie within the video. If you guys agree, we will move on as, you know, as accordingly to plan and if you guys as a group disagree then we can change you know we can move on accordingly from there so what we have is the real steel sacra we have the kaiser task we have our pen for the matchup this is going to be the lynch northwest collaboration pen with tactile turn this is the side click That'll be the pen for the matchup. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Give the thumbs up button. A lot of thought and time went into something such as this. So the first category is going to be materials. We can actually just leave this right here. So the first category is going to be materials. And I just, as I was getting set up for this, realized how tough of a matchup this is going to be for me. I love both of these knives. So with the Kaiser task here, we're getting 154 cm. We have a satin sheep's foot style of blade here. We have the cutout and dull thumb studs for the deployment. We have my Carta here, open construction. And then we do have a standard uh, deep carry clip there. Will be reversible. And then we have the clutch lock from Kaiser, which is fantastic. Now, we have the real steel here, the Sacra. This has a powder-coated K110 drop point blade, and this thing, guys, is slicey. It's thin. It's nice and pokey as well. Uh, dull thumb studs for deployment. Great little sharpening choil there. We are going to be rocking G10 on G10. So we have black G10 here. And then we have an inlay of some textured G10. Now this is going to have a 
what acts like a full length backspacer. This is actually the frame. It's a taco style frame, so it's going to feel very, very good in the hand. And then we have a nice, minimal, clean, deep carry clip. And this guy will be reversible and it is recessed along with the screws. So this is really tough, guys. Uh, you know, I have to be... I'm very partial to both of these knives. I really like them both, but I and I really like the Sacra. Uh, you know, 154 and my Carta uh, going up against K110 and G10. That is very subjective. This is all very subjective. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to have to give the 154 and the Micarta a nod uh, just by a very minimal amount. So we're going to go task there. Somebody's got to win this thing and somebody's got to lose this thing no matter what. So the next category is going to be price. The Kaiser task is coming in at $82. That's the cheapest I could find it. The Real Steel Sacra is going to be coming in at $71. So if we take everything into account, the pricing is not bad for both of these knives. I think it's pretty close, uh, especially, you know, kind of what goes into both of the knives and how well, you know, the fit and finish is of each of these. Uh, this is going to be very tough. So I feel like, I feel like the price we have a better price on the Sacra, of course, by 11 bucks. But we also have to factor in the materials. But I think the powder-coated K110, uh, this G10 with the texturing that's been done, uh, that full-length backspacer, in a sense, the you know, the, the integral frame of this steel uh, liner... <sighs> I'm going to go I'm going to go damn gonna have to give it to the task by just very slim margin guys so value here so this is going to be tough throughout this competition because value is kind of, you know, what is the knife worth after it's bought type of a deal. And we're going to be dealing with knives that are under a hundred bucks. So that's going to be, this is also going to be kind of a very up in the air category, the value. Um, so if we're talking about these two knives in particular, you cannot get this knife right here in this version right now. You won't be able to ever get it again as far as I am aware of with real steel. That is basically the conclusion that I have made. They made four different versions of this Sacra and they made some exclusives and once they were gone, they were gone. They're gone. So I could, I, I can really see these are available, easy to get in a multitude, uh, a plethora of places. So I think, you know, they're very close in price within 10 to 12 bucks. I'm going to say the value is going to lean more towards this particular real steel Sacra. So I'm going to just, I'm going to give the edge to the Sacra in this case because of how, you know, widely spread, widely available these tasks are. The next category up is going to be, this is where we get into the actual function of the knife, cutting, ergos, carry. Then we get into some other categories that are kind of secondary. But in this case, we're going up into the cutting category with a two to one lead for the task. And we will use the same material for both knives, basically out of the same uh, magazine. And then we'll do cardboard as well, just to kind of give us a better idea, if you will. Uh, and I had some people, a couple actually at this point, interested in actually putting some money down on this tournament, just for fun. Uh, you know, kind of like a... 
we could do like a twenty dollar buy in. I would stay out of it. I would have uh I would be just kind of the person that's uh running the show, if you will. I would not participate in, you know, that whole thing. If you guys are interested in it, um, you know, we could have a twenty dollar buy in. The winner or winners uh would kind of take the pot, if you will. Um but that is entirely up to you guys, of course. But let's see how the Sacra is cutting. The task kind of was giving me a little bit of fits. And I was going to say, this knife, guys, the Sacra here, is extremely, extremely sharp. Now, so is that task. So I'm not quite sure why I was having the issue. But that's why we'll do cardboard as well, just to kind of get that real feel but uh the, the real feel with the real steel is that seems a little bit uh slicier if you will so we'll do we'll just do three cuts on the same piece here see that has a good edge on it there's three with the task I don't know, you guys tell me, I, it really looks like the Sacra just right. I mean, they both go right through it, but this is like butter. Uh, I'm going to give it to the Sacra, guys. So we have a 2-2 lead here going into the ergonomics department. And uh, I've had quite a bit of time with both of these knives and they are both, they're very similar. Uh, when I made these matchups, guys, I literally just wrote in knives that kind of fit the bill and I thought would compete well. Uh, and like I said, I paid no mind to really where I was putting what. Uh, I just kind of filled things in. These are very similar knives. Crossbar locks, uh, both very, very well done uh, from tip to butt both very well done. They're very similar in their size. Now they are very different uh, based on their blade shape. Uh, man, this is tough. The ergonomics will have to go. There's something to be said, guys, for this full length backspacer here. And the texturing that has been done on this knife, it just... And the jimping here on the spine, you know, this is open construction. There's no jimping. I, I really am leaning towards the real steel as the more ergonomic one. It's got a more minimal pocket clip. Uh, man, I, I, I think I'm going to lean into... I think I'm going to lean into the task there, guys. Or, I'm sorry, the Sacra. Uh... So we have a 3-2 lead uh, going into the carry category. So this is, you know, unless you have both of these knives, it's going to be very hard to kind of put yourself where I am. Uh, as far as the footprint goes, though, the Sacra is going to be a more minimal footprint. This way, tallness-wise... Uh, maybe even thinner as well. Yeah, it's quite a bit thinner. Not not quite a bit, I guess I should, shouldn't should say. Uh, but it is a little bit thinner. You have a little bit skinnier liners. And then this has that integral part. And then these are kind of on laid. Uh, man. I think I like the clip. I know I like the clip better on the Sacra here with the more minimal look, the more sleek look. It's recessed along with the screws. Uh, boy. I think I'm going to go with the Sacra, guys, to be honest, which is what we're doing here. So we have a 4-2 to two lead going into the aesthetics here. So this is going to be very tough as well. 
Uh, it depends on really what, you know, what your style is. Some people, this Sacra is going to be really loud, and I think that's kind of the point. And it depends on what you're looking for, you know, it's situational. So this is going to fit the bill if we're talking about going outdoors, uh, that sort of thing where you need a recognizable object and then that way it doesn't get lost or what have you. The And it would make a great EDC knife as well, just all the way around. It's lightweight, drop point, thin, strong lock. And then so would this. This would be a good knife as an EDC knife. Uh, the aesthetics. Which one's better looking? Which one is better looking? The satin blade's nice, but the pow that orange powder coat is really nice as well. See, this is typically what I go for right here is satin and micarta. I love this. I love the Sacra. Uh, I'll, I'll give the aesthetic slightly to the task because that's typically that's what I typically go for is satin, micarta, or something and micarta. So just, I mean. On a different day, I might say, screw that. I'm going with the Sacra. I almost said that right now. Uh, the Sacra is an awesome looking knife. So we're going into sounds. And we have a 4 to 3 lead for the Sacra. So sounds. I think the Sacra will take this. I don't know if it's that integral frame. But it's got a louder open. And a more solid close. I mean, this thwacks out. But it sounds kind of just like every other crossbar lock where... This really hits hard. So we're going to go with the Sacra. So we'll give the edge there to the Sacra. That'll take us into our last three categories. We have Action, Fidget, and the Better EDC and Work Knife. So these last two categories really coincide with one another. The Action, you know, how good is the Action? Well... That is also going to play a role in the, the fidget, pretty much, of the knife in some ways. Uh, something could have really good action, but it's only a front flipper. And then the knife it's up against has multiple deployments and is still pretty good. So I could see, you know, where there's some cases there might be a knife that wins the action part where a different knife wins the fidget. But more commonly, I think... The one that wins action is going to win the fidget category as well. And as similar as the Sacra and Real Steel are, because they are both thumb stud knives, they are both crossbar locking knives, and as much as I have raved about the clutch lock on the Kaiser here, and I, it is, it's great, I love it, and it's really good on the task, but the action on the real steel is, it's really good. It's, I mean, it is on the task as well, but I wish I could explain it or I wish you could feel it for yourself, but look how controlled that is. The Kaiser is just droppy, you know. I mean, they're they're very similar, but I almost so it's the action. This one's much snappier. 
and it's so much easier to disengage and more comfortable. I'm going to give it to the sacker, guys. You might think I'm bullshitting, but I'm not. And I'm going to say as well that the action is going to go to this knife as well. It's just, you can get so much more on this knife for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because the thumb studs are more comfortable than uh, the task there. They're just, they're different. And it feels a lot more comfortable to actuate the Sacra here. And the, the crossbar lock feels better as well. It's just more comfortable, smoother, easier to grab. The better fidget knife, guys, is the Sacra. The way you can flick that thinner blade out Yeah, I'm going with the Sacker, guys. Uh, and then the better EDC knife. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three. So it really doesn't matter. Um, the better EDC and work knife. Uh, it's going to be very, very, very subjective because some days... The task would definitely be the better everyday user and work knife. And then other days, you know, the Sacra. If you work outside that day or you work outside, you know, you would take the Sacra. Uh, the better work and better EDC knife. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I'll give it to the task just because I feel bad for it getting smoked. But two, four, six, seven, one, two, three, four. Seven to four. The Sacra upsets the task. Uh, that's insane because I love the task, but I really really like the Sacra. You guys will have to let me know what you guys think down in the comments. We will be running the second matchup in the first round. Hopefully tomorrow I will get to these as soon as I can. They will pretty much go on into April. Uh, and then at some point in April, we will have the championship match between the final two remaining knives. Uh, and that's how March Madness College Basketball works. It starts sometime in March, and then it runs into April for the championships. Uh, so we're basically going to kind of follow uh, somewhat the way you know they do things in a sense. In this case, we only have 32 to start out because 64 would have taken a long, long time. This is already going to take a long enough time on top of what else I already have to do. Uh, but that will be, and I guess we can do that right on screen here. We will move. the Sacra up and he will face either the Frack or the SRM 255. The next matchup we will do is the Sakoki versus the, the Savivi Sakoki versus the Vastid Corgi. Stay tuned for that one, guys. I think that was fun. I think this will be fun. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know who you think is going to win it all. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you guys on the next one.